everybody, and welcome to the Medivac Podcast. If you don't know my name by now, go back a few episodes and learn it. It's have- Christian, I think. <laughs> it is Christian, yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, our guest today, Ish Viegas. <clears throat> yes, sir. A 22-year combat control veteran of the Air Force with yes. two silver stars. See, si. Not just one, but two. Si. 22 light years of service, huh? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a couple years. Well, welcome, so man. That's an understatement. Yeah, I, I think. What are we going to talk about today? What are we talking about? There's today? so much to talk about. With you. I don't know. I mean, twenty. How do you how do you wrap up twenty two years, nine months, seven In an hours, hour. no, thirty six yeah. seconds, thirty six <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I had it down. <laughs> uh, well, let's start where we always start. Yeah, and talk about what brought you to the military. Why did you join? Why did you want to get into the Air Force? Well, uh, trade skills. Yeah, I mean, what the hell was the question I won? <laughs> Why'd so, you join? <laughs> man, you know, okay, okay. So, I, and I don't know if I mentioned this on uh, on uh, the other podcast, but I grew up in Mexico, right? Yeah. So, my parents actually brought me over to the States, man. And, you know, I was a young kid. And, I mean, even as a young kid, like, you know, I saw, like, how privileged every American is, bro. Mm. Like, I, I'm not even kidding you when when I say that. When we first moved here, we moved to San Angelo, right? Mm-hmm. I had a house with windows, like no shit carpet, Run, running water, running water. Yeah, I had an AC. It was, you know, granted it was the swamp coolers, but I had an AC system in the house, and there were no holes in the roof. And the best part of it was there was a bathroom indoors. <laughs> like, so what you're saying is America's not that bad? Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's an important message nowadays. I honestly have no idea how Americans could sit here. I mean, and granted, you know, looking back at it, like we were dirt poor, yeah. right? Like that, we didn't have any money. That was like the cheapest. It was a small, I want to say it was like about a thousand square foot home, right? And I mean, it was old school, all the bedrooms connected and everything. And But when when I came from Mexico, I was like, oh my God, we're rich. You know, like it was, we made it. Yeah, it was amazing, man. Yeah. And I mean, even in Mexico, we were considered the rich kids mm-hmm. because we had a freaking generator. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Really? Damn. Yeah. Where in Mexico did you grow up? Uh, you know where Acapulco is, the state oh, of yeah. Acapulco? Oh, yeah. yeah. Most people know that, that uh, state. You typically fly into a city called Altamirano. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you like that accent? Altamirano. Oh, that was nice. Can you say tortilla for us? <laughs> tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> tortilla. Tortilla. <laughs> There's that Texan coming out. I know, right? <laughs> so wearing the Texas shirt. <laughs> I tell everybody it's a tortilla. It's, yeah. Or Villegas. Yeah. My last Villegas. name is Villegas. Villegas. Ish Villegas. Man. So, so you came, what, what year was that, man? Oh, man. It was uh, early 80s because I remember like my first American song was uh, the Michael Jackson. Beat it. No, it was uh, the zombie one. Uh, oh, Thriller. Oh, Thriller. thriller. Yeah, thriller. Like yes. One of the, it was Thriller and then the Beastie Boys at that time frame. So oh, yeah. it, it was early 80s, I think. Yeah. 83, 84 okay. maybe. Yeah. So let's see how old I was. 70, 77. So I, I was about six years old. Six, seven yeah. years old. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, man. Um, it's old enough to remember what you were moving from. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, totally. You know, I, like I look at pictures now and I have vague memories of, you know, playing in the dirt, playing with marbles, playing tops. You know, now kids play like all these video games. Yeah. yeah. Crap. We've all got three or four systems. So, yeah. so when you moved, like in your mind, I know you were young, six years old. Did you like always think about the military or that just like fell into your life at a certain point? No. So so at a young age, man, like uh, my grandfather, the, the Mexican soldiers would come up over the mountains. And, it, you know, I really didn't know what the hell it was, you know. So that kind of piqued my interest. Like it's mm. like, oh, that's when I first realized what, granted, it was the Mexican military, mm-hmm. but they would come up over the hills and my grandfather would entertain them, give them beers, and I'd chill out outside. You know, they'd let me, like, hold their guns and stuff. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Here, here, kid. <laughs> here you go. Yeah. yeah. Here's so, your safety. Yeah. <laughs> safety's right here. Mm. It sounds like the 80s to me. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. But, yeah, I, you know, that was my first introduction to a military, you know. And then when I came to the States, I started watching... Uh, like, uh, we actually had a TV, you know? Mm-hmm. I was the remote, but we had a TV. <laughs> yeah. 
So just change the channel. I know, right? Like, <laughs> but so you were probably much. excited about it every time. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And it was in color too. Mm. Like, oh, so you is, were a rich kid. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. To go without that long, it makes you appreciate when you get all these nice things. Oh yeah. Especially bro. all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, then I, you know, I started getting exposed to, what was that show? Vietnam uh, show Tour of Duty. Okay. So then that's when I really like, okay, like I, I want to join the military mm. at some point, you know, and, you know, the older you get, the more it's, I, I really wanted to join to serve my country. Cause okay. I mean, realistically, like people, people here in America have no idea how rich they really are. I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. even the poor drive an $800 Escalade or $800 a month payment on an escalator. Everyone has a cell phone. Everybody has a refrigerator. Yes. Yeah. Everyone's got access to clean water. Running yeah. water. <laughs> bathroom <laughs> indoors. Yeah. Like, dude. It's not all that bad. No, it's it's great. You know, actually, poor people have it better than I do right now. This is bullshit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're open nice hotels right now. Yeah. All the COVID hotels. Yeah. Five-star service. Uh, take it. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving on. <laughs> so, so you, you join... So you're think you watch the show. You're like, I'm in the military. I want to do service to the country because you realized at this point that how great it was for oh, yeah. you. Yeah, and so you wanted to contribute back to what yeah. you what they gave you when you yeah. came here. Yeah, absolutely. And on top of that, my life was actually going nowhere. I was dirt poor, and I was like, I'm going to end up in jail at some point. So yeah, the military was yeah. sounded really well. Yeah, yes. you know, really good. Uh, but yeah, I looked into the Navy. I looked into the Mar- well, not really the Marine Corps. No offense to any Marine Corps, <laughs> Marines <laughs> out there. But uh, yeah, I looked in the Navy, looked in the Army, and um, you had to go in regular before you can enlist for soft, you know. So um, I'd almost given up. And then Air Force recruiter looks at me. It's like, I was walking out of the Army recruiter's office. Like, hey, man, what you looking for? Like, you guys are weenies. Yeah. I'm like, you, you, don't, ha- you don't have what I want. You guys don't do cool stuff. <laughs> but yeah, then he shows me this pamphlet of, you know, this dude with a bunch of guns and toys around, he's looking up at the tower, right? Yeah. Which I ended up repelling and doing my training out of at, at Pope Field in North Carolina. Okay. But anyway, I'm like, hey, he started telling me about these guys. Hey, they work with SF. They work with the SEALs. They work with the Rangers. You know, they do all kinds of cool stuff. I'm yeah. like, cool. Sign me up. Huh. All yeah. right. Little joint action. action. Yeah. That was it. So that brought you in. Yep. I had a couple of... uh Air Force friends. Uh, at that time, I lived in Del Rio, so I had a couple of Air Force friends, and like they found out what job I wanted, you yeah. know, combat control. And one of them was like, "Do your parents beat you?" And I'm like, "What?" It's like, "Well, if they don't, tell <laughs> they, them to start." They like, what are you start. talking about? <laughs> like, I had no clue what they were talking about, you know. But like, you're gonna get your ass kicked yeah. here over the next two so, years. Yeah. So the job description for combat control was it the same thing that? Like when you went in, was it the same job that they pitched at the recruiting office? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> this is my favorite question to ask for a combat controller. So, what did they, first of all, what did they say you were going to be doing? Uh, we we're going to be jumping in. Well, we do jump, dive, and all that stuff. But I mean, we were going to go out on all these missions and sort of jump in behind enemy lines, set up airfields, <laughs> and all this stuff. I was like, yeah, like, like I'm, I'm so jumping with the Rangers. <laughs> yeah. First of all, what is a combat controller for our audience out there? Combat controllers. Uh, well, it's uh, one of two Air Force uh, soft specialties. In case people don't know, gray beret, special operations red. forces. Red, okay. red. red. Yeah. Says yeah. the Wait. Air Force guy. I'm just an army dude. Please, it's only one color to me. Scarlet. That's tan Scarlet. beret, brother. Scarlet. Gray. Scarlet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Scarlet. Because what's the PJ one? Maroon. Maroon, yeah. What's so the gray pur- one then? Purple. The gray one is uh weather, well, weather. It used to be special ops weather. Yeah. Now it's uh special, special reconnaissance. Yeah. Oh. They've yeah. got a lot of new positions. They just did a whole shift change. They, yeah, they, they got combined like, well, I don't combat know they combined aviation it. advisor now. Yes. They added a new one. Yep. Yeah, so I mean we're moving up in the world, yo. Mm. You know? Scarlet. Okay, yeah. so Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> we know a CCT does Scarlet. Yes. <laughs> And yeah. what else do they do? Uh, let's see. Uh, our primary skill set or where we earned our money, you know, back in the day was uh, air traffic control. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we can set up an air traffic control uh, tower anywhere on the ground, not necessarily, you know, a tower. But uh, like Haiti, you know, we had guys go in and 
set up on the ground. Yeah. They had literally had a wooden table and they with their uh, radios. I don't know what they're using now, golf or something like that. Mm-hmm. 117 golf. The 117 yeah. golf. Yeah, and how important you guys are for rangers that, who do airfield seizure, right? Yeah. Because you are coming in blind yep. without boots on the ground. Yeah. So you guys are jump like technically jumping in mm-hmm. in a super small team or by yourselves. Yeah. Usually that that's that's typically our only unilateral mission that we have right now is the airfield seat, air, airfield team. Yeah, gen- yeah. Uh, for the most, but everything else we get farmed out. You know, yeah. onesies, twosies. It's rare that we have two controllers on one team, mainly because we're super territorial and you know <laughs> we want to be in charge because we're incredibly effective. Yeah. yeah. So so walk <laughs> walk us through a detail of that. So if you were to. Uh, get an operation where you have to do airfield seizure. Mm-hmm. What is your specific job? What, like, from start to finish, what are you doing? Mine, uh, from start to finish, would be coming up with the air plan um, and then obviously briefing everyone up on what the close air support plan is because that's our uh, other uh, skill set, I guess, mm-hmm. so to speak. At one point, it was only 10% of the force, and now it's where. Every combat controller will be JTAC certified for the most part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't make or break us, right? Because we can still do air traffic control. So we'll come up with a plan, uh, the parking plan on the ground, mm-hmm. um, setting up the airfield, and then bringing on the follow-on forces. So like, i.e. the Rangers or, uh, you know, the, the JSOC mission where they jump in with the Rangers and, you know, set it up there on the spot. And yeah. Um, while you guys provide security, then bring on the rest of the forces and then continue on to push from there. So you can help guide conventional forces into yes. a seized airfield at that point. Yes. So we'll we'll at least have one guy as the air traffic controller, and then we'll have another guy that's going to be in charge of the close air support requirements. But I mean, in a nutshell, that's what we were designed for. And I mean, if it, 9-11 has transitioned us into a completely different role. Yeah. Right? So we've moved into more of the JTAC or, you know, Joint Terminal Air Controller for the layman. <laughs> the but, layman. Yeah. So now that's the majority of our skill set is uh, we're all JTACs. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you've got a couple pretty cool stories. I know we covered them on Free Range previously. And yes, for sir. people who are... Interested in going back and listening to the full stories in depth, look up for uh, Ish Viegas part one and two. They're from uh, a couple years ago. You can check those out, but would like to hear some touching on those stories. Your memorable night. You've got, uh, you've got two pretty cool Silver Star stories. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my first one was in, uh, was it, I guess you call it Northern Helmand. Um, I forget the name of the freaking valley, but anyway, Firebase Cobra. Okay. Um, and I think they, the Green Berets did a show on that. Um, they? Yeah, they had they had some sort of episode up there. It's like, why we fight now or something like that. I can't remember what it was. That. I haven't seen that either. Yeah. yeah. We'll have, have to, to check that, that one out. out. Yeah. It's, it's called Why We Fight? I think so. Don't quote me on it. My memory sucks. <laughs> it's probably the TBI. <laughs> yes. The blown up one. I've had a few <laughs> of those. All of us at the table yeah. are just going to be running around. <laughs> 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 but it'll probably come back to me in like five minutes. Matt, Matt's right. going to check up on it okay, for us. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Jamie, can you pull that up, please? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's off of uh, Firebase Cobra, so I, I don't know how to use the interwebs, but the the interweb is that it? Why we fight now? Why we fight now? Why we okay. fight now? So what's it about? <clears throat> what year? What does it say? <laughs> Put him on the no spot. No pressure. Put him on the spot. <laughs> hey, on, it, on TV, like you guys are like. Here it is, sir. Jamie's Wait, my my man, Jamie's my so earpiece isn't working. Yeah. <laughs> You guys got an earpiece? No. <laughs> you don't get one. No Damn. earpiece for you. Oh. <laughs> Keep you at a disadvantage. So, so what's the show about? It's uh, So anyway, it's about the Green Berets. Yeah, and yeah. obviously they never mentioned the JTAC on there. Yeah, why would they? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. So it, it's about Firebase Cobra. It's like one of the deadliest places on earth, right? Yeah. Which I, I can vouch. I, I was there for nine months. <laughs> yeah. So what, what year were you? I there? was there from 09 as... August, September of 09 mm. to June of 2010. Okay. So yeah. I did a pretty good stint there. Yeah, um, 09 was really hot in Hellman Valley. Yeah, it was yeah. brutal, man. Um, like we, we literally lost a dude once a week. Um, not necessarily an American, thank God, but yeah. you know, and I mean, you know, 
unfortunately it was Afghans. Yeah. But literally one guy a week. Still guys on your team. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's got to be mental fatigue all on its own. Getting into your head. Yeah. I mean, you know how we deal with it. Like, yeah. you know, at that point, you know, oh, what deployment was that for me? That was, that was like my 10th deployment. Jesus. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Ninth. Because then I redeployed again down to down south for the second. Hey, let's take a minute there. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> 10. How many deployments did you have? 10. 10 yeah. total. Yep. Uh, seven to Afghanistan, the initial invasion of Iraq. Then I, I did a job down in Africa and then another job in South America. Damn. Um, yeah. Yeah. And all over the place. Was that Sierra Leone in Africa or? No, it was uh, Mali and Mauritania. Mali. Okay. Yeah. Um, Some pretty hot shit out there too. There is. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, you know, for me, like we didn't get as involved as they wanted us to because I thought it was fucking crazy because yeah. we were all going to die, but I was still willing to go. But I was like, we're all going to die. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the suicide squad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you're exactly. going yeah. to insert us. There's no close air support. There's no Nobody's rescue. Nobody's coming to get us. Yeah. We have two ATVs, two trucks, and 240s are our strongest weapons. Like, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. Let's know. do it live. Yeah. 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 Fuck oh, it, God. we're doing it live. Oh, yeah. But fortunately, somebody, you know, decided to, you know what? That is kind of a bad idea. This is a good point you make. Yeah. Yes. Maybe we should reconsider. Yes. I'm like, but I'll go if you want me to. You yeah. Know? They're like, yeah. Might as well. Let's shelf it, you know, for a while. Um, yeah. And then South America went down to uh, Colombia for a little bit. Do some, you know, pretty cool stuff down there. Yeah. Oh, man. So, that yeah. had to be very interesting. Listen, uh, I would talk about it, but uh, then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for your audience, nobody really says that. You know, it's... G14 classifieds. Yeah, G14. G14, G14. G14. top secret yeah. classifieds. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, yeah, so 10 deployments. I mean, Damn. I think there's guys out there with more than that now. Oh, there you know? is. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Of course, of course. And, yeah. and, you know, especially in your SOCOM community, your deployments are looking at six to eight months at a time yeah. as opposed to the regular 12 to 15 months, right? Yeah. So so that makes sense. Yeah, when I mean, you're it's in, just busy. Especially for 22 years. Yeah. So you're over there in Helmand Province. Yep. Losing a, a man a week. 2009. Yep. 2009 to June 2010. So, I mean, I wasn't there maybe, I think I was there maybe about a month or something like that. I got there early September, and I think the citation is September 29th, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I, I can't fully remember, but it was the end of September. Um, so John Tinsley, a Green Beret, he was the captain of the Alpha. Um, he ended up getting hit by an IED, and uh, Zach Reiner, he's a Air Force Cross recipient, was in the turret. And then a couple of the other SF guys who, I mean, they made it out, but Tinsley was the only casualty um, in that area. Yeah. So they were stood down for about a month, and that's when I came in. And uh, so anyway, we'd been looking for a way to get rid of his gun truck, right? And they wouldn't let us bomb it because, I mean, to the Taliban or ISIS or whoever the hell's over there now, I don't even know. Yeah. You know they, they change <laughs> names so often. Al-Qaeda, Taliban. Yeah. Um, All of them. Yeah. It's like a trophy, right? And mm -hmm. we do not want them to have that trophy. So yep. we, they wouldn't let us drop bombs on it. So we're like, well, screw it. We're going to go blow it up with demo, right? And so we're, there's basically a line in the sand, like almost literal line in the sand, which separated uh, a river from us in the south to our white space to uh, them up in the north. Okay. So as we're moving along, like, I mean, there's little kids perched up on the walls, like ready, looking for us. And if anybody knows anything, they're waiting for the show to start, right? Yeah. And I, I think that, can you touch on that a little bit more? Because I think that's important to inform people is like, you know, you have very, very young kids over there scouting out. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. For, Acting yeah. as for these insurgents. Scouts, yeah. They're scouting out. Uh, they're reporting, you know, just walkie talkies uh they resupply i mean they're using them you know and i mean the kids are all in on it you know there mm -hmm. there is no innocence it's the way they've lived for it's hundreds the of way years they were raised you know i mean who came in there napoleon uh genghis khan the russians like i mean yeah. they've seen it all they mm -hmm. you know oh and the other thing to them time time uh, like americans view time like for us 20 years in afghanistan it's like a drop in the bucket for them. Yeah. 
they remember hundreds of years past. You yeah, know? yeah, they're and an they, ancient civilization. Yeah. Like the Hatfields and the McCoys, they mm-hmm. hold a grudge, man. Yeah, like yeah. they, yes. Well, hell, when I first got there, they thought we were the Russians at first, and we're like, no, nah, bro, <laughs> no, nah, bro, nah, Russians true. have been gone for a while, yeah. you know. But yeah, but I mean, but the yeah. connectivity over there too is it's not prevalent. So you have you know, complete tribes that do oh, not yeah. communicate with each other yep. and they just live in the Stone Age. Yeah. Literally, literally the Stone Age archaic law. It's mm. it's insane. Yeah. You know. You but, have a village elder there usually mm-hmm. and he manages the politics of the village. Yep. So yeah. when you come in storming up strong, you know, obviously you're going to the first yeah. enemy in your past. That's yep. the Russians. So that was... Yeah. Surprising. Yeah, that old guy has so much power. His word is law. Yeah. It's insane, yeah. man. Um, but yeah, so the kids will get perched up, you know, plus they, you know, all those all those little dudes want to see a good gunfight and, you know, some of them even get involved in them. Sure. So, you know, and then the women, like, man, I've seen women in burkas running back and forth. You know, I got them in my scope and I'm like, eh. <laughs> Legally, you probably could have, but it's like, yeah, I don't want to be that one guy where, you know, they go clean it up and then they take photos and next thing you know, I'm in Leavenworth, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they're carrying ammo cans the entire way, mm-hmm. you know? Like I, I have photographs of these women like running back and forth, fighting position to fighting position. Yeah, resupply. Resupplying them. Yeah. And, and, and I think that it's important to note that because people don't realize that at home. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like Hollywood, you know, Hollywood where they don't run out of ammo ever. They don't reload. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know. How much ammunition is in that, in that M4 or yeah. AK-47? <laughs> and they're charging the whole time, you know. It's like the Americans are just hiding behind and they're just capping them off like as they're charging. I'm like, no, they want to live too, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, within reason. Yeah. yeah. It's like playing Call of Duty. I camp all the time. You know? <laughs> I'm like, bro. It's, the most, it's I, the most effective thing in real life. <laughs> I got in an argument with a kid one time and I'm like, bro, I do this in real life, man. I'm like, trust me. I'm like, you don't He's get like, a second, we'll, you don't get a second chance, right? So I'm camping. Yeah. What level of prestige are you yeah. in the real war? 400. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I would be. I'd probably be like way down there. <laughs> But, uh, ten deployments later, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah still. It's mainly ten deployments. I've done a hundred <laughs> Call of Duty matches today alone. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm out. <laughs> See you guys later. Oh man, oh, so shit. so walk us through. Yeah, what's yeah. so walk okay. us through the rest of this. So we're coming up. You know, we cross the river. Kids are sitting there perched up, and uh, half my team goes to Clear Village, just off behind us to the north west, right. And so half of us are moving forward. We start finding IEDs. It's like, all right, mark it, mark it, mark it. Um, We found about nine or 10 and the convoy stopped. So me, two other SF guys, the dog handler and an interpreter, Hmm. we're walking forward, right? And uh, we keep finding IEDs on the path. We're marking them this way. We figured we'd save time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, Unbeknownst to me, one of the elders had already come up and he warned uh, the team sergeant. He's like, hey, man, this whole place is full of IEDs. It's it's, it's literally a minefield, right? Yeah. Uh, so I had um, no clue. All I knew is there was a shit ton of them and there's probably more, right? Um, so anyway, my alpha calls me up on the radio because he's wondering where I'm at. And he's back in the rear with the convoy. And I'm like, yo, sir. I'm like, I'm going to keep moving forward. This is what we're doing. Um, I can do my job from anywhere, you know? And so right as soon as we turn, this massive IED just blows up in front of us, right? And I mean, I thought the other guys got hit. I thought I got hit. You know, I had I couldn't see anything. I saw black soot and um, I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but it's like super, super slow motion. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's like painfully slow motion, you know, the entire process where, you know, the first thing you check is your junk. And I'm like, okay, it's still there. <laughs> every Literally, time. I think every episode that we've hit at this point, yeah. <laughs> anyone uh, with an ID is becoming a running joke. Matt's sitting there shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Touched yep. his junk. Yep. <laughs> the junk is there. important, yeah. you know? It's yeah. like, uh. but, uh, but yeah, and I, like I'm sitting there watching the ground as this black soot fire and like the ground is just exploding. Yeah. yeah, you know. So anyway, and I, I think I'm like, am I dead? Am I dead? Nope, junk's still there. I'm good. And 
Then I hear all these little, you know, stuff whizzing by my head. Snaps. Yeah. And I'm thinking it's the debris falling. I'm like, what's going on? And then I start kind of, you know, the, the smoke starts dissipating. And I'm like, what the hell is that popping sound around me? So then I look to the east and there are these, they look like little gophers just popping up and down, you know, like yeah. shooting from the hip the entire time. Like, like meerkats up and down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Whack-a-mole. Yeah. Whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole. <laughs> like, that's literally all I can think about. I was like, oh, that's just like whack-a-mole. Isn't that weird that your, your headspace is going there? Yes. <laughs> it's the whack-a-mole. But I was like, okay. So you whacked some moles then? Yes. So, <laughs> and, so then all... All of a sudden, like reality comes back in. And granted, it's still super slow motion, right? And yeah. I was like, oh shit, my guys, where are the other guys? Yeah. And, you know, I see them. They're already, they're the smart ones. They're behind a berm already, right? Yeah. And they're just like, I mean, it was like this tiny little patch of dirt. It wasn't even a berm, right? So all three of them are like huddled in there and they're firing over their head. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's bad. Standing over here with my dick in my hand. hand. Yes. Bad situation. <laughs> Literally. Handing, Literally. <laughs> standing there with his dick in his hand. My package is good. <laughs> I'm good. Let's go. Oh, we're in a fire fight right now. There's a tick. My bad. <laughs> so, like, man, I, you know, as soon as I looked over, I looked once over at the guys. I'm like, all right, they're good. I'm like, where am I going to go? Because I can't fit there. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, well, the only other position is right in the same direction that I'm getting shot at. Yeah, I got to run towards them. Yeah, so so at that point, like, I'm, I already know there's a ton of IEDs everywhere, right? And I'm like, oh, uh, well. And you're you're fearful at this moment that you're going to set one off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was... That is a terrifying feeling, by the way. It, I could personally attest to that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is a feeling unlike... I mean, I mean, obviously, you know. So if you know, you know. But if you don't, like, yeah. man, it is a weird, weird feeling, you know, where you're like, well, I'm probably going to die, you know, yeah. and it is but, very strange. And it's out of your control. That's the worst part is like yeah. you're you sit there and hesitate for a minute because mm-hmm. you're like, uh, I'm going to die. And I don't know how to react real yep. <laughs> like I'm at this point. I'm going to get shot if I stand here. I'm going to yeah. get blown up if I move. And this yep. is and by the way, this is happening in your head in slow motion. That's, oh, that's super a great slow point. It's insane. That you, that that this is happening in split seconds. Mm-hmm. You're literally making these decisions very very quickly, but in your mind, it's a lifetime. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's nuts. Like it felt like at that point, I'm like, wow, this is taking forever. Because part of me knew where I was, you know, and I'm trying to control that adrenaline. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I look over and I'm like, well, I'm either gonna get shot and die, or I could take my chances with an IED and still die. So it's like, which one? I was like, screw it. So I started running, man. I was like, and towards the enemy, towards the enemy. Um, and, and all these guys are thinking like, fucking Air Force, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the Green Berets right there. there. Like, the Green Berets are yeah. sitting there. Where's this going? I am not in a five-star hotel like, oh, here. Like, yeah. what's WTI? <laughs> Where's the air conditioning? Yeah. Join the Air Force, they said. Yes. Five-star hotels, Somebody they said. Somebody needs five-star hotels, okay. <laughs> that looks like a nice berm over there. I'm going to go whack some moles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, so <laughs> yeah, so I'm running, right? I'm hauling ass, and it's like, the Matrix, right? You, everybody's seen the, the movie The Matrix oh, yeah. where he's like, oh. and all yeah. the rounds stop. Well, they weren't stopping for me, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course, like, your hand out still. Like. Yeah, <laughs> but I saw all the, I saw a wall of rounds coming in. So now at that point, like I see all the, all the uh, little whack-a-moles standing up and they're all spraying from the ground, right? Yeah. So I'm like, shit. Thank God they're hip firing. Oh yeah. Like not, and that, that's a that's a huge point too. Is it is. is a lot of them do not use sights at mm-hmm. all. It's really nice of them. It yeah. is super yeah. nice of them. It gives <laughs> yeah. you an advantage. <laughs> yep. Thanks but, for the handicap. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally the only reason why I'm still here is because they shot from the hip. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this over. Oh yeah. <laughs> so let's edit from the that hip. in post. Yeah. 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 From the hip. <laughs> So we'll edit that, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't give them an advantage. <laughs> no. So especially so, now. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> We're out of. Yeah. We'll go back in a few weeks. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So wall of bullets. Yeah. There's this wall of bullets coming up, and I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna make it, you know. And like, I flung my weapon to the side, and I did the you know typical Hollywood jump, and I was like, ah. So cue explosion. Yeah. Yeah. Doves flying around in the background. Yeah. 
Right. <laughs> What's an eagle doing here in <laughs> Afghanistan? <laughs> so, uh, so I hit the ground, right? Psst. Kayla, <laughs> did you know with Black Rifle Coffee's Coffee Club subscription, you can get fresh coffee shipped to you every month? What? You don't even have to go to the store. Whoa. You don't even have to leave your bed. What? Wow. How did you get in here? You might want to go ahead and join the Black Rifle Coffee Club subscription before one of these guys shows up at your place. Like, I, I don't know how fast I was running. You know, you're carrying about like 65, 70 pounds worth of ammo and yeah. gear and armor. And I just felt my hands, boom, hit so hard. My right one felt it like immediately, right? But adrenaline's still kicking. I knew they were kind of screwed up, but I didn't think it, were, it was that bad. Yeah. And then, I mean, both my arms and my wrist on in this arm. Um, but adrenaline's going, so kept fighting, right? So, but let me backtrack a little bit. As soon as I freaking hit, like it was, it was crazy. Like it, I think about it now and it still seems so crazy where I literally rewound. Mm -hmm. Back to the moment where the IED goes off, real time is like, and then it happens in real time. And now I'm back to that moment where I jump and I caught myself, and now it's back onto the fight. You know, so you had like a whole replay of oh, the yeah. entire event in your head. Yeah. It was insane. And I, I you know, I, I think I mentioned it in uh, in Jared's podcast, but you know, it's, it's like I never really wanted to mention any of that to anybody. You know, because mm -hmm. I was like. You know, did did it really happen? Am I crazy? Like, are they gonna think that I'm yeah. freaking nuts? You know, so well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know from <laughs> yes. <laughs> you gotta be a little bit crazy, I think, to just run towards a barrage of bullets at this point. Yeah. You know, I mean and, and that you gotta utilize that crazy mm -hmm. to get through the objective. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I, you know, I wanna point out something like, you know. People a lot of times mistake, uh, and I don't know if it's bravery or not, right? Like, you know, while we're on that topic, I, I think, you know, our people, you know, they do a lot of amazing things mm. and people think it's, oh, they were so brave. They weren't scared of anything. It's situational. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, man, like, you know, and again, it's that weird feeling because you know you're doing it and I'm not sure if it really is bravery, but I was scared shitless. Oh, of like, course. I was literally scared. If you're not scared, you're a psycho or mm -hmm. I think or that's you're a psycho. within the definition yeah, right. of bravery is you recognize your own, you know, mortality. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, it's, it was, it was and make a decision. And you still make that decision to move yeah. forward knowing in your mind that you're gonna die. Yeah. You made that assessment already. I'm going to die either by bullets or by an IED, but you still choose to move forward with that fear. That's bravery. Yeah. That's courage. Yeah. And, you know, and I left out the guys on the other side as part of the story, but I mean, they were, they were like, yeah, at one point I heard, hey, we're running out of ammo. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I started shooting back, I just remember like I'm sitting there working on my radio and, and I'm like, damn, these guys are out of ammo. I'm like, I need to, I can't expend my ammo. 210 rounds. Like, you yeah, know, that's a lot. Uh, well, no, you go no. through that very yeah, quickly. You go through quick. Yeah. But, you know, Hollywood and the news is like, oh my God, we found him with 210 rounds of ammo. What was he planning on doing? Taking down this building? It's yeah. like, no, okay. that goes by quick. <laughs> it's a single firefight. Fast. Right? And, and that's what you, you mentioned this too is, is you get in Hollywood, you have an endless amount of bullets. Do you know how quickly an M4, a fully automatic M4 empties? Oh, yeah. Seconds. Oh, what, what was that governor? He was like uh, the ghost gun. I thought a thousand oh, rounds a minute. Yeah, or a thousand rounds a second. Sorry. Something silly like yeah, that. A like, thousand rounds a second. Like yeah, mini, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Sorry, I didn't mean to take away from that. No, that's so yeah. true. Yeah. The, the minigun doesn't yeah. even shoot that. Yeah, fast. I know. No. Um, but yeah, it's quick, man. You know, you, you cannot sustain a gunfight with you know two hundred ten rounds. You know, and I think I had an extra magazine because it was uh, my uh, marking rounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, but. Man, I, you know, they're sitting there crying out that they're out of ammo. So I'm like deliberately, as soon as I see one guy pop up, I'm like pop, 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 taking shots. I'm I'm literally playing whack-a-mole at this yeah. point, right? <laughs> Slow and, and meanwhile, yeah. I'm still trying to get 
cast on board. And little did I know that when I jumped, my freaking buttons got all jacked up. So I finally put it back, started calling in artillery, freaking aircraft started mm-hmm. coming in and we got to working, right? Yeah. Um, 18 hours later, and I think it was like 30, 32 enemy KIA, yeah. stuff like that. Um, I mean, it was just insane. We made it pretty far north into the bazaar. We ended up blowing up John Tinsley's truck, which, you know, what we want, what our, that was our part of our goal. Yeah, keep mm-hmm. them from getting that trophy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, 18 hours of adrenaline, man. Uh, it's intense. And, uh, but yeah. And two, it, two broken arms the whole time, right? Yeah. And I still didn't know how bad it was. Like, honestly, I, I. Yeah. So when did you figure that out? Well, after so we went up to the bazaar, there was a uh, booby trap. You know, we blew that up. And uh, by then it was like morning, you know, like 16, 17 hours into it. Okay. So we decided to go ahead and withdraw, you know, pull back. Um, like we were spent, man. And so at that point, I, I kind of felt my arms hurting a little bit. And at one point, like I tried picking up my M4 and I, I couldn't, you know, it was just, I mean, it was Damn. painful, yeah. you know? Yeah. So fortunately, my Delta was a uh, sports medicine guy and nice. he wrapped my arm really good. This one didn't hurt quite as bad, you know, at that point. Your left arm. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I'm not using it as much as the right one anyway. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, um, I thought it was maybe a sprain and I kept going with it. Um, yeah. And I redeployed later. Well, I ended up busting up my ankle that uh, in 2010 as well, same area. But I redeployed again, thinking that it was just a, you know, tennis elbow, which sure. the medics kept telling me or the docs. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, it's tennis elbow because you're still lifting, you're still working out. I'm like, okay, whatever. You're just yeah. like, I'm just a beast, can bro. I, can I have an X-ray, please? <laughs> Broken arms don't matter to me. <laughs> So what was the uh, what was the injury then? It was yeah, it was uh, both my uh, fractured elbows. Yeah, both my elbows. Uh, what is that thing called? What is this bone called? The humerus. Humerus. Yeah. So my elbows. It was an impact injury. Yeah. Okay. Into my elbows, and I had a lot of osteophytes and all that. Mm. Um, the radial head or whatever it's called mm-hmm. actually kind of expanded a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that's what caused my arm to lock up. Damn. And then the left one over time, like it just started doing the same thing. Cause I guess once you damage them, they, you start building all that extra bone and stuff. Yep. And, you know, but this one locked up like a couple of years later, but Damn. yeah, you yeah, know, I still, still made it through that mission with two broken arms the whole time. Yep. You're spending all your ammo at the beginning of the firefight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, it's damn. it's paper cuts, man. Like you know, putting it putting it relative. I mean, man, you left the leg back there. You know, you know, like did. It, it really is all relative. Yeah. Um, but that's the whole it could be worse mentality, yes. right? Which yeah. devalues your own story. I think is yeah. you know everybody has to face their own demons, fight their own battles. But can you tell us how you were received once you got back to base with your leadership? Uh, you know. Uh, See, 2010, I kind of was just snuck out of country. Like, I feel like I just got, I was snuck out, right? (laughs) Um, So when I got back to our uh, talk back in Kandahar, you know, like, I mean, I was nervous as hell. Like, I was recluse. Like, you know, I was actually pretty pissed off because nobody picked me up at at the airport, you know, when I came in and you know, uh, finally went and got a truck. I came back and then they were asking for uh, my license. I'm like, we're at war here, bro. I'm like, when when do people have time to like- See your government driver's license. Is it a special Afghan license or something? You know, so I'm pissed off. Your American license they wanted to see? Yeah, they want to see my American license. Do you think someone's going to pull me over? (laughs) Like my driver's license is going to apply to these roads right now. Yeah, Yeah. I'm like, I don't even have a wallet, man. First of all, I can't even steer. My arms are broken. (laughs) Right, so <laughs> so the 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 guy that pulled, I actually just went around him, right, and then they turned on their lights, and I was like, "What the, f-? you know?" I'm like, "You're in the way, bro." Like yeah. I just went around you, easy day, right? I'm picking up my bags, nobody picked me up. Yeah. Here I am with my M4, fully loaded, mind you, one in the chamber and everything, because I'm still in that mindset, right? Yeah. And he's like, "License." I'm like, "What?" You know, and he's like, "How long have you been gone?" I'm like. A few months, you know, I'm like, I, what's going on? He's like, uh, sir, we require licenses now. Please go ahead, angry, 
guy, you know, get out of here. Angry man. <laughs> yeah. So, so I get back to the talk and, you know, I, I started getting debriefed and all that stuff. And, you know, I, I get pulled into the office and this was a couple of days later. Like, I'm just trying to keep to myself. I'm away from everybody, you know, because Try to avoid letting them know you got hurt. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm avoiding everybody. Like nobody knew I was really and how, hurt. How know? infuriating is that is you're, you know, we expect that when we come home, right? No one understands. Yeah. But, when you're going to Afghanistan, from Afghanistan to another place in Afghanistan, you might think that they'd understand. Yeah. yeah. And how irritating is that? Of You just went through the worst day of your life and he's asking for your license. Yeah. It, it, Get out like, of my hey, face. Hey, to our audience out there, if you're an MP, think before, <laughs> you know, this poor guy over here. Uh-oh. But it's yeah, gonna man, be irritating. It, it is. It's it's super irritating, you know. But you know, at the moment, I'm very pissed off. But hindsight, yeah, they're just doing their job, of course, you know. And of course. and I don't fault them, even though they are responsible. But anyway, um, inconvenience my day. Yes, it's, <laughs> so, but yeah, man, you know, I came back and like I'd gone native, you know, like yeah. The, even uh, my good friend Ben, like he, he he pointed out to me, we weren't good friends in the beginning, obviously, but you know we became really good friends. And like he pointed out to me, he's like, "Bro, you're you need to get out of here. Like you need to go home." And I was actually trying to extend, right? Yeah, just because I was like, "Man, I don't want to go back to the real world." Yeah. You know, it sometimes it just feels so much easier being deployed. Simpler, yeah, you yeah. Know? Structure, very structured. regulated environment. Yeah. Yep. yeah, you know exactly what you're doing. Yep, like, it's like you know exactly what you're it's doing. Like prison. Every day. I know what I'm doing today. <laughs> Just don't drop the soap. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> still or, a or drop it. I, mean, I don't know. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's 2021. Yeah. Um, you make your own decisions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so this a couple of days later, right? My uh, my commander calls me in, and he's like, "Hey, because uh, we write our after actions reports, you know, but I don't know of any guys that actually put like, I am a badass." <laughs> I did this and I yeah. delivered a baby. Yeah. It's like whack a mole, whack a mole, arms hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we all just want to get the hell out of there and do the job, right? Yeah. yeah. So he calls me and is like, "Hey, uh, I want you to talk me through that one particular event." So I, so I was telling him and I talked him through the whole process and I'm like, in my mind, I'm like. Did I kill the wrong people? <laughs> like, a, did I um, fuck up? <laughs> did I, yeah, did I drop one? No, I got clearance. Yeah. I, am I going to jail? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I, I, all that, you know, and you're already paranoid coming out anyway, right? Yeah. Out of the field. So that was my entire thought process. I'm like, and he's not telling me what's going on, right? So I'm like, hey, uh, sir, you, why? <laughs> you mind if I ask what this is about? Yeah. You know, and he's like, well, uh, I'm... This sounds like, you know, Silver Star material. I'm thinking about putting you in for a Silver Star. And I was like, wow. yeah. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> going to jail. Whoa, yeah. Oh my God. God. The, uh, God. the relief God. of that one, huh? Yeah. I drop a bomb on someone. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't God. supposed to. Yes. So, you know, once I heard that, I was like, oh my God. Like, so relieved. Just relief. relief. That's yeah. what you felt. Yes. I'm like, I'm, let me go back to my cave now. Right? Yeah. Relief. Did but, you feel deserving? Probably no, not. man, you know, I, you did your job. Even to this day, like, you know, I, I look at it and I'm like, it wasn't that big of a deal, you know? Like, I read other guys' citations, other guys' write ups, other yeah. guys' ARs, man, after action reports. And it's like, man, that dude, he did so much cool stuff. Like, and th- that goes back to what I mentioned is devaluing yourself, right? Mm-hmm. It could be yeah. worse. Everybody, you know, I don't, I didn't do what you did. I just did this. Could have done more. So, common mm. in, you know, military personnel. Yeah, it really is. Humility is what yeah. it is at the end of the day. I mean, it's kind of wrapped but, up to, to humility. I mean, but at this point, you're literally saying that, you know, I wasn't courageous. I wasn't brave, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just... I would argue that point. <laughs> I would argue that too. <laughs> well, but I, I think yeah. every one of us who served can say the same thing. Like, oh, yeah. I was doing my job. I was yeah. looking out to the left and right of me, yep. making sure everybody was safe. Yeah. And we got home in mm. one piece. It took me, I mean, years. Uh, See, like I got hurt in 2011 on my last deployment, and uh, had then I discovered that all my stuff was broken. You know, after my you didn't realize it until that much later. Yeah, I had no idea until tennis elbow, bro. Like the real thing, tennis Um, elbow. 
<laughs> and the only reason why I found out is because my eyeball got messed up. Life limit. My eyeball. Say. Oh, yeah. yeah. My eyeball. It got messed up? No. Yeah, yeah. Over pressure. You oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I had to get medevaced out. And like, I didn't want to go. I was trying to fight the nurses. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm staying. They're like, bro, life limb or eyesight. Yep. The three. And if you leave, we're going to handcuff you to the bed. So I look over at my delta. I'm like, can they do that? Like, and he's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not up to you Never anymore. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I digress. What was I saying? Eyeball. Uh, your eyeball? Your arms? Oh, That's how the you found only out. reason why I found out is because after I got hurt, like my stuff kept hurting. And I was like, man, you know, I went from running, uh, holding six and a half, seven minute paces for an extended number of miles, you know, and now I can't even get past below an 11 minute pace. And, hmm. you know, I went from curling like 225 to like, man, barely being able to do a 50, you know, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I got little T-Rex arms now, you know? So. Oh yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> these, these, these monsters over here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, uh, Dave, can we zoom into his arms, please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check out, oh yeah. Check out these yes. pythons. <laughs> oh yeah. Did, did, you, did you get this? Did you get the tattoo? Oh, did, yeah. did, did you, you get, get the tattoo? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Look directly into the camera. There, there it is. Uh, <laughs> you gotta roll it a little bit. <laughs> um, you but look no, fine to me. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, mean, I hit it. I try. Yeah. I just don't lift as heavy as I used to anymore. Yeah. You know? I got beach muscle now. What's the yeah. point? So the point is... <laughs> <laughs> what was the damn point? Your arms. T-Rex oh. arms. So the point is, it's like, you know, I finally got an entire checkup because my eyeball. Had, I, had it not been for the eyeball, like I would have never known that all my crap was broken, you know? And, you know, lo and behold, later, like you need to stop running and you need to stop lifting weights. And I was like, oh, now you tell me. This is I, shitty I, I don't advice. know, dude. You would look pretty badass with an eye patch on right now. You know, that would put yeah. some cred. For a while, like, I mean, <laughs> that would look badass. Yeah. <laughs> Just wear one. Yeah. Where, can now get, on. where can I get a parrot? <laughs> yeah. Yar. Yeah. A parrot. Yeah. A parrot store. Yes. Probably the parrot store. So, yeah, parrot so store. you did a full assessment, a full physical. Yes. And that's when you found out your arms were messed up. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, and then uh, uh, I redeployed one more. Or no, that was after my redeployed from uh, from Firebase Cobra, um, and they gave me a second award for that last deployment. And again, you know, I don't know why, but well, you must have done something. Yeah, I mean, twenty one day gun battle, man. Is that it? Only three yeah. weeks. That was it. Twenty one days. Mm -hmm. That's a my lot. god. So. You know, I, I really wanted to touch base on this. Your family. You had a family. I did. This whole time. Yes. So, first of all, wife and kids? Uh, well, at the time I had a wife and we'd been trying for kids okay. for a while. Um, it, it, you know, the stars didn't line up. Um, I got tested, you know, made sure, you know, I was pumping 68 million a shot. Cha-ching. <laughs> nice. Right? And that was after you checked your junk overseas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My marriage was essentially on the rocks, man. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, yeah. I've been, uh, I got married in 2003, I think. Yeah, right before Iraq. Mm -hmm. I got married right before Iraq. And I mean, I was just gone 24 All the time. Uh, yeah, 24 7. Um, 10 deployments. Yeah. Yeah. All the TDYs oh, wow. and spin Plus the training. Uh, and yeah. everything else. Like, I think I did the math and it was uh, out of the eight years that I was married, I only spent. Spent, like physically spent with my wife at the time, like two years and a few months and change. In yeah. eight years. In eight years. Two uh, years together. At twenty five percent of the time. That's yeah. that's insane. insane, man. Yeah. That is insane. But so your marriage was on the rocks, yeah. and you know, at one point were you like, let's try for kids, or like it just happened, or? Well, we were trying for kids right after we came back from my uh, England. Uh, rotation. So I was there from uh, 03, uh, 04 to 07. I came back in 07. And I mean, I was gone like 300 days out of the year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we were already having problems. And I mean, hey, we figured we can fix it with a baby, right? <laughs> yeah. Because that fixes everything. Of course. The right. baby band aid. Yeah. The baby band aid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, I, me personally, I didn't want to have a kid just yet because, I mean, I'm deploying all the time. I don't know if we're going to, if I'm going to live or die, you know, at any point yeah. in time. And, uh, but I was like, let's do this. Let's save the marriage and all that stuff. And, you know, I kept deploying and deploying. And then finally, um, uh, you know, gone for nine months. 
And I was sitting there at Cobra, like just our downtime. I was talking to my buddy and I was like, man, I miss my dogs. And he's like, are you married? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, so you miss your dogs <laughs> over your wife. I'm like, holy shit. Like it put it into perspective, you know? Yeah. I, was like, I was like, holy shit. You know, and that, that right there and then is when I made the decision. Like, you know, I man, I got to let her go because she wants things that I'm never going to be able to give her. And I was a completely different person, man, honestly. Yeah, you true. know, from, you know, and I tell these kids, it's like, you will be a different person by the end of your career, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's knowledge and power that kind of gives you this insight, you know, mm -hmm. as to what you were. And it's it's very innocent. Like, now that I see these kids, they are so innocent, man. Like, man, I wish I could go back to that, you know. <laughs> but, you know, you do all these deployments, you do all the things you have to do in service of your country, in service of the man left and right of you in front mm -hmm. and behind you. And, I mean, it, it physically and mentally takes its toll, you know, time after time. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I can't do this anymore with her, right? And so I made the decision to let her go, you know, and we ended up getting a divorce. It was amicable. Um, but... You know, my command, I remember one of my commanders one time at one point, he's like, he's like, yes, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, what's that, sir? He's like, you're always gone and you manage to, you know, juggle your family life and, you know, do your TDYs and deployments. How do you do it? And I mean, inside I was like, you have, I wanted to scream. I'm like, you have no clue <laughs> yeah, yeah. what is going on. Yeah. Right? Like, because you got to portray yourself a certain way. And, of you course. Know, we're good at compartmentalizing compartmentalizing yes and you know keeping things from the rest of the team yeah, right putting a facade on making yeah, sure it's a complete facade think, i mean at this okay. point too you, like you don't want to show weakness yeah. as well and that yeah. that is weakness in your mind at the time you yep. know in hindsight it's not you know that's yeah. it's the job it is part of the job mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah i mean it took its toll you know and uh you know when after my 2011 deployment i ended up uh, getting stationed here in San Antonio as the special ops recruiting liaison. I wasn't a recruiter per se, but I just worked with all the uh, the recruiters okay. and developing our candidates, like, you know, giving them the past, um, making sure that they're ready to ship and go. And like, man, I was just on a downward spiral, like, you know, and I had no idea. Yeah. Like, yeah, I started drinking a lot. Um, obviously, I had a few surgeries and I started self-medicating a lot. Yeah. Like, Dude, I was high for like two years, all just off of pain meds. Pain meds, alcohol. Mm -hmm. yep. So using all the crutches. What was yep. what was the moment where you recognized you needed to make a change for yourself to better your life, better your <clears throat> situation with your family? Uh, honestly, at at that point, I, I started dating a friend of mine that I'd met, you know, a few years back. But um, like my world came crumbling down like super fast. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to get into a lot of the details, but I was TDY after a night of drinking, after a night of talking about, you know, my dead buddy, Mark Forrester, and, you know, other guys that died. And it was just like, man, I'm like, yeah, just take another beer, take another beer, drown mm -hmm. everything, right? Yeah. yeah. By the end of the night, man, um, I ended up getting arrested and thrown in the pen, you know, and I ended up fighting like seven security guards. And Damn. Anyway, long story short, like, you know, they, uh, that weekend, my chain of command came and saw me and, uh, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm like, just leave me here, man. I'm like, I deserve it. You know, I deserve to be here. And I, I didn't make up any excuses or anything, you know? Um, so ironically enough, uh, my girlfriend now was with me, uh, back then before she dumped me. Um, but <laughs> she had given me a card to reach out, right. For help. And I, I was like, man, you know what? Maybe, maybe I do need to, right? And yeah. I put it in my wallet. And anyway, they found it in my wallet. And um, apparently, I, I thought I was somewhere else. I said, you know, it was the 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 Hollywood version of PTSD, right? Yeah. yeah. So Just it was literally like to the T. This yeah. was not exaggerated. So, but I don't remember a whole lot of it. You know, I was just. Uh, I was in jail. I knew that I messed up somehow. And I'm like, screw it. I was ready to go to jail. I was ready to spend the rest of my life or whatever, you know, in there. And uh, anyway, I ended up getting bailed out the next day. And everybody's like, dude, you got to tell us what's up. You got to tell us what's wrong. I'm like, I screwed up. They're like, no, dude. Like, you yeah. need to start 
spilling your yeah. guts out because yeah, something yeah. bigger is wrong. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I was still kind of in denial, you know, I was like, you know what, man, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with me. You know, I was trying to play the tough guy, trying to, you of know, course. be this guy that everybody thought I was this, you know, um, this badass, you know? <laughs> yeah. But that's Bad. literally what I was still holding on to. I'm like, no, like I am not weak. Yeah. I am going to own this. Ego. Yes. 100%. And I was like, PTSD? Yeah. That's bullshit. I don't have fucking PTSD, yeah. you know? Um, I was completely in denial. So um, they asked me if I wanted to go to treatment. And, you know, I was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe I do. Maybe mm -hmm. I should talk to somebody. And I mean, getting arrested was probably... Probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, I mean, it, you and know, that's when you realized and recognized that you had a problem. Yes. Yeah. yeah big problem, you know? And so now I, I tell guys this story all the time, man, you know, especially uh, with the younger guys on team, when I see, like, sometimes I see myself in these guys and I'm like, yeah. bro, I'm like, Hey man, you're probably feeling this. You're thinking this your relationship is suffering, right? She's yeah. telling you that you're you're different. You know, there are all these cues and, mm. you know, I'm not pushing them to get help. I'm like, yeah. just pay attention yep. to the signs. The signs yep. that are all there in front of you. And I'm like, don't let this happen to you. Like what happened to me, like, you know, I'm lucky. Yeah. I'm very, very lucky that I recovered, man. You know, I'm very lucky that I had a good lawyer, that I had good friends and I am extremely blessed. Yeah. That I had people looking out for me. You know, not everybody has that opportunity. They don't. And and if I can if I can keep one guy from going having to go through what I went through, man. Yeah, it's all worth it, man. I, like I had a guy that you know I told, and um, he came back to me later. He's like, bro. He's like, thanks, man. He's like, yeah. I started noticing that, and I got help before it was too late. You know, but I think that's why this show's so important. To yeah. showcase stories such as yours so that you could, so people look at you and say, this guy's gone through worse or similar experiences that I have, and there is a way out. Yes. Mm. Yep. There are, I mean, there's an amazing support group out there. Like, man, you know, I'm, I'm part of uh, two organizations, actually. So I, I, I got a, uh, started by a buddy of mine, a 501 G300veterans.org. Like, um, we take soft guys, um, guys with combat, ex <clears throat> guys with combat experience, yeah. and we take them out hunting. That's awesome. We don't yeah. ask anything in return. It's like, hey, come out, have a good time, and that's it, man. That's you know, awesome. We yeah. don't parade you. We don't ask you to endorse or anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the board, uh, and I just recently got asked to be on the board of the Combat Control Foundation. So we, awesome. okay. we started that uh, up not too long ago, and we had our first fundraiser uh, this past weekend and it was a success, you know, and again, same thing. It's resiliency for our folks. Yes. Um, aiding the families, the veterans, transitioning. I mean, like you name it, you know, possibilities are endless. Providing resources. Providing yeah. resources. Much needed. Yes. And, you know, it, we have the Care Coalition. We have, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's so many different organizations. I used to work for the Care Coalition for yeah. a little while. Yeah. And I think that's how we met. Um, yeah. So I got you a few coalition. tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Army Navy, Army Navy game. Ooh, That's yeah. how we met. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think about it until you left. I was like, I know that dude. <laughs> how do I know that guy? Well, when I put his number, I had two of him. And I was like, and then I clicked. There I'm can't like, be oh. two of me. Yeah. There's only one. <laughs> There's only one. So, so you are continuing to serve. This is what I absolutely love about uh, people like you, is you. You've gone through a very difficult situation. Couldn't even say that you were... Uh, Courageous about it, <laughs> brave about it, which you are, man. It, yeah. it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you over the last couple of weeks and seeing you, you know, do all of what you do for veteran community and the military community. It's pretty amazing. So if you had one thing that you could tell our audience out there that might help them overcome some of the adversities in their life, what would it be? Man, I would tell them to reach out. I mean, sometimes just talking to somebody like, you know, helps out, reach out and get involved. Like, yeah. you know, to me, like, it, it, like I help out because it brings me joy. Yeah. Like, you know, it feels a little selfish at times. Cause I'm like, man, that, 
it makes me happy. Because it makes me but happy. But it also yeah. helps you out, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's therapeutic yes. for me. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like I still go on some of these retreats all the time, man. Like I love taking guys out hunting. I love being part of it. Like get involved. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, reach out to guys that are in the same boat, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, like we did the other week, we don't have to be, you know, talking about the problems. Sometimes it's just being in the presence yep. and knowing that there's somebody that either went through similar experiences or feels the same way about you. It's that camaraderie you know? that you get. Yeah, it's, and, it's and being, all about camaraderie. And being honest is the most important part. I mean, yes. we sat down, we all sat down a couple of weeks ago. We yeah. had a long conversation for, what, three and a half, four hours. And we were yeah. just bluntly honest with our emotions. And yeah. It's hard I mean, to do. It's hard to do, yeah. especially with, I mean, badass dudes like yourselves. <laughs> Opening up to guys like man. you is, is difficult to do, but that was one of the best things I've done in a long time, just yeah. having an open conversation about how we feel about these things yeah. and how these things are actually affecting us. Yeah. I, I feel like a better person for it. It's okay yeah. to be, you know, to show emotion. Yes, And I absolutely. think that that's so important to take the message out of your story is it is okay to feel weak and powerless oh, at yeah. times, but that's the great thing about being a human being, right? Because yeah. you could fall back onto the loved ones in your life, fall yeah. back to people like Ish, Christian, you know, our guys back there. You really have to be able to recognize the problem first though. Yeah. And if you can recognize that, you'll overcome anything. Yeah. Real, you can be tough and tender. Real men <laughs> cry, gentlemen. Real yes. men cry. Come cry in my arms, Ish. <laughs> maybe, maybe later. Um, <laughs> But, I, you know, the other thing I want to touch on <clears throat> is, so I, I, you know, when I first got asked to go on these hunts, mm -hmm. I was like, man, I got paper cuts. Like, you know, yeah. all, all my crap, you know, it's all. It could be worse. Paper cuts. It could yeah. be worse. I don't feel entitled to any of that, right? Uh, but my, one of my good friends now, you know, uh, at the time I was at a fundraiser and um, I talked to him the whole night. You know, I, I thought he was a patron off the street. Yeah. You know, little did I know this guy is super wealthy, mega wealthy. And he ends up buying me and my friend Johnny uh, each an Oryx hunt, a $12,500 Oryx hunt. Oh, wow. shit. And I was like, who in their right mind yeah. would pay this much for me and this knucklehead, right? Yeah, 25 grand to go hunting. Yeah. yeah. So Johnny's dad was like, hey, you know that guy, you're, that patron that you thought was, you know, just off the street, just, you know, having a drink at the bar? He's like, that's Mr. I don't want to say his name, but he's like, Mr. So and so. He he has this ranch and he's, you know, in the oil business. I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I'm glad I wasn't a dick. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, you know, I'm that's the other nice thing. You know, this guy. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Yeah. Like, you know, you're a human first. Yeah. You, know? yes. so you treat everybody with respect. That's just the way I was brought up. Yeah. You know, unless they don't finish their house, then you break their legs. Goddamn you know? contractors. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a different story. Uh, I digress. Man. I digress. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> so, so anyway, I go to this hunt, you know, and I'm like, well, now I have to. Now I have to go, yeah. right? And man, the feeling after I got done just hanging around like patriots. Yeah. You know, I used to question like, why am I even doing this for, you know, ungrateful freaking people in the U.S.? Yeah. You know, like they have no concept of what the military, what patriots do for them. You know, and I was like, this is why. Yeah. Because these people have been blessed. And granted, this guy was dirt poor. He went to Vietnam and he'll tell you, he's like, I didn't see combat. He's like, but regardless, when we came home, we were treated like crap. It's yeah. Like literal doo doo yep. thrown yeah. at us. Actually, yeah. Spit on. Spit on. Like, yeah. It's insane. He's like, I am making sure that none of you guys get treated like this, right? Yeah. So I was like, Damn, like you know, that, it feels, yeah. that is deep. And like, but just the camaraderie, knowing that there are people like that is insane, you know? And, and I want to tell the audience to the vets that are listening, man, like, and you know, the invisible, the whole invisible wound thing, right? Like, man, yeah, I got injuries, you know, they're internal and all that crap. There was a point in time where I wish I had external injuries, like visible injuries, because people might you know, react different or whatever. You could help explain it a little yes, bit better. I wish yeah. I wasn't blessed with such amazing guns. Take it for someone like <laughs> yeah. me that has the physical injuries and having the, like, the three-year-old kid, like, being like, robot man, you know? <laughs> like, uh, Just the other day, yeah. 
Oh, Robot man. I always say shark attack at this point. but <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> so, brother, Melting listen, accident. your story has been amazing, and we could definitely talk for hours and hours. And uh, I just want to inform the audience, where can they find you? Uh, my Instagram, uh, I'm at uh, ish underscore VS. Wait, is it ish underscore CCT underscore? Yeah. yeah. What is it? Ish. Oh, ish underscore VS underscore CCT. There we go. Ish. Nice. I always forget. Or on Facebook, it's Ish Viegas. You know, I got a cool Jared Taylor photo on there. Ooh. <laughs> so. Well, brother, thanks for coming on the Medivac podcast. You've been absolutely awesome to talk to. In my eyes, you're a hero, brother. Thank you, and guys. Yeah, it is amazing. a pleasure to call you a friend. Thank you, sir. Um, love you guys, man. Keep spreading this word. I we think. love you too, man. There's a lot of vets that need help, yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. Just getting right to them, you know, to get them the resources and reach out. I got I'm a wealth of resources, man. If they ever yeah. need anything, if uh, you guys want to reach out to Ish, if you have any questions, comments, or just want to say hey, feel free to reach out to him or myself and David. Uh, we we'd be glad to help you as well. Thank you very much for listening to the Medivac Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice day. Take care. Yeah.